To learn more about Next Level Sound's online music production courses, please visit nextlevelsound.com. Let's let's look at the interface here. In Soothe 2, we'll just go from left to right, top to bottom kind of thing. You have two modes. You have soft mode and hard mode. It defaults to soft mode. Soft mode is a more gentle, transparent, all-purpose mode where you, where you will probably have a number of resonances that you're going to try to address with one instance of Soothe 2. And, and it, nothing is too broken or scary, but there's just a little bit of harshness in different spots. So in that case, you would stay in soft mode. If you had a perfect sound that was perfect, except for one super gnarly resonance. And when I say gnarly, I mean the bad kind of gnarly, not the good surfer gnarly, but the bad kind of gnarly. If you had, if you had otherwise nice sound, but you wanted to focus on one resonance and really suppress it because it was really bad, you would go to hard mode, right? Soft mode is all purpose, general, let me kind of take care of a bunch of little things that are kind of bugging me. Hard mode is there's one resonance that's driving me nuts and I want total suppression control over it. The depth is what we would say, sort of like the drive. How much soothe do you want applied? Do you want a light soothe? You want a medium soothe? You want a ton of soothe? These numbers just correspond to don't get caught up in DB and things like this, but you can use these numbers to pick an answer that you like. Do I like 5.4 or 3.5? But don't think of them necessarily as hard DB or threshold. It's just amount of depth, but they do give us good resolution so we can fine tune. Over here is selectivity and sharpness. If it was me being the Virgo that I am, I would put selectivity on the left and sharpness on the right. Because selectivity is a more of a threshold oriented um, uh, parameter and sharpness is more of a uh, soothe acting on the sound parameter. So selectivity is, is sort of how much you're acting, what, what soothe is gonna be looking for. That's how you put it. So with a light selectivity, you're saying kind of watch all of the pokey resonances across the frequency spectrum. And for a high selectivity, you're saying, I only want Soothe to react to the super strong resonances. Leave the other ones alone. Could you see a high selectivity working well with a hard setting? If you were really going after the, the really bad offenders, so those, these two are friends, a high selectivity and, and a hard soothe. And if you wanted to just sort of lightly even out a sort of uneven sound that had holes in it and was lumpy, you would go for a light selectivity. And if you were going for uh, more harshness and trying to tame more sort of harsh things, you might go for a higher selectivity. And it's graphically reflected, which is really cool. Sharpness is how Soothe is going to act on the signal. So a strong sharpness is going to create skinny resonances to get spiky, skinny things that are poking at us. And a, a rounder, it's just like a cue, exactly. And a, and a lighter sharpness is a more general thing saying, hey, that whole area kind of needs some resonant suppression. But if you pump up the sharpness, you're saying that skinny little thing needs resonant suppression. If you push extreme sharpness, you can get some weird artifacts. Anyone hear that yet? You will. Don't worry. We'll do it. So, so... You know, it's just like sharp, sharp cues on EQs. Once we get really skinny with some of these things, everything sounds weird and bad. 
Like you're not making it better sometimes. So, you know, you got to find the sweet spot there. Okay. There's a left, right mode, and there's a mid side mode for mastering coming up this summer. Let's say you just have resonances in the middle and you want to leave your sides. I know you want to leave your sides all unsoothed. Um, you can do that. So we'll do that. And then there's a linking and unlinking of the channels. Let's say you had a, a stereo miking with an oboe on the left and a French horn on the right. These things don't really agree. Their resonances are not going to at all agree. So if you had a stereo mic with an oboe on the left and a French horn on the right, and the resonances were all over the place, what would you, you would go left, right mode. What would you do with the link? Link them or unlink them? Unlink them. Right. Right. Or, uh, maybe not zero because maybe they're blended by the stereo miking, but you would start to let the left side of Sooth be its own person and the right part, right part be its own person and that they don't have to agree so they can address, you know, whatever is needs to happen on those channels. So there's your link. You can also say Sooth the left and leave the right alone or vice versa or keep the balance. And I bet you can option click this and reset it. Okay. Let's keep going. Here is the attack, right? This is, okay, Sooth saw a resonance. How long does it take Sooth to achieve maximum suppression? So, so fast is all the way fast. It defaults to like one or something. And then it can go slow. Forget about what these numbers are. They're not milliseconds. They're just numbers so that you can fine tune on the right answer. They're program dependent, um, very much like the attack and release in Pro MB. It's not milliseconds. It's just numbers to help you keep track of what you like. So here's a fast attack and a fast release. If you're soothing drums, and if anyone's played around with Soothe yet, and was like, oh, I don't know if I like this on some drums. And there are some weird resonances, but you find that Soothe is too grabby and is clamping down on your kick and snare attack, taking the transient out in a way that sounds weird. What do you do with the attack? You slow it down. Yes. Anyone, as soon as you do this, you're like, oh, I love Soothe again. I was mad at you for no reason, but you're fine because it's going to let that transient come through. Is it still going to address the resonance? But right after the transient. So you're going to get the best of both worlds. You're going to get the snap of your transient and some judicious, healthy resonance suppression. The release is the amount of time it takes for the sound to recover once it's been suppressed and the threshold is no longer triggered. Fast release is good, but let's say you had, a, a, I don't know, I'm stuck on an orchestra thing today, but let's say you had strings that were swelling slowly and with resonances. If you wanted it to be more transparent and less breathy, what would you do with the release? Slow it down. Slow releases always have a smoothing factor, right? In dynamics tools. So if it feels a little breathy, a little, little, little swimmy, and you want it to be more smoothy, you can slow down the release. And for those who play with it, it's a very responsive tool. It's good. Attack and release. Here is the quality. And so uh, while you're working with it, you can have it be, this is oversampling, right? Which is going to be resolution. And the higher the oversampling, the better resolution. Also, the more it taxes your CPU. If you only have one, it, it is, but it's not the worst. If, you're, if you have a million vocals and they all need individual soothing, you might want 1.0 or, or, uh, or, or two time, one times or two times. If you're mastering, and you have Soothe on the master and you just have one Soothe and you have a robust computer, you might want four times. Two times seems like the happy medium. But when you're offline, 
you're getting coffee or whatever you're doing um, or sleeping, you can go maximize it, right? And so, because you don't care because it's offline. So that might be good if all of a sudden you have too many soothes and your computer starts crying, you can drop this down to one. If you are like Natalia and you have a, a, a Mac Pro that's worth more than three cars, you can probably run it at four times. Um, depends on what you're driving these days. <laughs> yeah, probably three you guys. Sorry. Um, three inexpensive cars. Um, okay, so so there's that, right? I, I'm running two times, four times. That's my thing. For resolution, this is a parameter that sort of refreshes all of the filter artifacts, how often it flushes through them and resets them because this is doing some intense things. So normal is fine for, again, real time. But when you're uh, kicking back with your offline bounce, go ultra. It's like a light beer. So tweak these to make your system happy, but this is where they live. And this is the setting that I use, this one here. You can give it a sidechain input and you can listen to the sidechain input. What would be what would be an example of a sidechain input? This is tricky. When would you want to feed? When would you want Soothe to listening to a different channel, but then acting out that profile on a on a specific channel? Vocal to a synth, exactly, but on the side, same thing, exactly. So let's say you had a hi-hat track with um, snare bleed, for example. You could, or, or snare track with hi-hat bleed, either way. You could then have one signal be the side chain, the other be the, the, uh, the beta, and then it could carve out resonances that would please the alpha signal sort of you can use the whole mix and the vocal track and then make space make resonance suppression space in the whole mix to carve out a dynamic space for the vocal track it's tricky we'll do it we'll do it in next level mixing too of course we will we'll do it but um so i know it's fun and really brilliant and amazing okay we also have a wet dry mix so so 100% wet mix means you're getting the full effect of Soothe. And as you dial down this mix setting, you're getting a blend of the Soothe signal and the unsoothed signal. And in the manual, what they say is sometimes if you want more normal sounding things at, when using Soothe, especially maybe with hard mode and a high selectivity and a lot of depth, you, you can soothe it very hard and then blend in just enough of the unsoothed signal to kind of make it sound normal again. So that is one use of the mix. Or if you're doing something very subtle and it's not subtle enough with the depth and you can't get the depth as subtle as you want it, you could then wet dry mix it, or just like we do with parallel breathing compression on drums, do something crazy extreme and then get a blend of the, like the over compressed and the uncompressed signal to find a sweet spot. So it's sort of, here's your parallel processing. When you're setting up Soothe and you're trying to get a good answer, would you, and I'm pretty sure it does default at 40, would you, where would you put your wet dry mix when you're trying to fix a signal? Would you try to get the right answer with a 40% mix? Yeah, no, right. hundred percent. And then dial it back, but don't try to like, try to make it sound incredible with a 20% mix. Cause then you're working against yourself. This is a trim and this trims. Um, this is for a B referencing, but I, I'm going to get back to you a little bit on Tuesday because I don't totally understand how they have this trim set up because 
it's trimming only the wet mix before the wet dry mix and the output bypass. I don't understand why they did that. I haven't had to use it too much. So let's just let that go for a second. Um, it's sort of when it, the idea is so that you can boost or, or I guess you can only boost. You can't cut unless trim and is negative. Um, but you, I guess, yeah, because it would only make it quieter soothe. So you can turn stuff up so that when you go in and out of bypass, you don't freak out about the bypass level and you can compare similar loudnesses without, you know, doing it. It, it doesn't have a smart bypass. So you do it by hand, but the way that they do the routing was confusing to me. So I have to mess with that over the weekend. Anyway, leave the trim alone for now, bypass it and you better be able to hear it or whatever. No, you can play with it. It's it seems like it throws off the wet dry mix that you set the thing to. I'm not sure. Anyway. Okay. We'll get back to that. So, okay, what is the delta? Good question. The delta is like listening it's listening to the affected signal in soothe so you can solo out exactly what soothe is what part of the signal soothe is affecting and it's very very helpful we have a delta when we when we do we have lots of deltas in our world if we go to k clip and we'll be clipping next here's a little delta hiding right here and we use it to set the clipper really nice if we go to pro c2 delta is this little headphones here there's deltas everywhere Deltas just solo out the portion of the signal that's being affected. And they're very helpful to attuning your ears to what Soothe is doing. So Soothe has a master delta. And then any different point of Soothe has its own private delta. Double delta, multiple delta, right? Pretty cool. So you can delta just one instance of a soothe point uh, or you can when all of your different soothe i guess i need to find out the word what do we, what do we call these it's not an instance of soothe because this plugin is an instance of soothe what do you want to call this a soothe point a band let's call them bands each soothe band that's fine yeah yeah they are bands of course they are soothe band each soothe band you can also delta which is really helpful Okay. You can also hide these controls and you can right click each one of these delta bands, sorry, these soothe bands. And that's another way of working. They have option clicking, there's little key commands here. To learn more about Next Level Sound's online music production courses, please visit nextlevelsound.com.